So let's just hop right into uh, my presentation on gamification. And by the time that you leave uh, this session this afternoon, I want you to, to be able to walk away with a good understanding of, of what gamification is, uh, what are some of the elements that we see in gamified websites, and I'm also going to equip you with a framework for uh, developing your own gamified system. And once we've gone through the framework, we'll look at some specific Drupal modules that will help you build out the gamified system for your site or your client's site. And uh, we'll do a, a quick demonstration of the goals module, which I helped uh, put together with some help from the Drupal community. And then the remaining time we will uh, spend for questions and answers. A little bit about me. Again, my name is Scott. Hi, everybody. And I am the Director of Development at Duo Consulting. We are a Drupal shop in Chicago. And as I mentioned a moment ago, I helped put together the goals module, which we'll be demonstrating a little bit later. And uh, I do enjoy bowling and softball and lots of geeky stuff. So if you like that stuff too, we should talk because we'll probably have, something, probably have something in common. So enough about me. Let's jump into some gamification. So just to quickly define what gamification is so we all are on the same uh, playing field here. Gamification is the use of game elements and game design techniques uh, in a context that's actually not a game. And, and to really break it down and put it another, another way, it's taking something that's not a game and applying structures and components and elements to it that make it feel more game-like and more enjoyable. And what I want to do is actually look at a game and look at some of the components that are part of the game and identify those components that we see in a lot of gamified websites. So many of you are probably familiar with this. This is FarmVille. It is a game. And this game has a lot of the components that we see in the, in the website gamifiers toolbox. And these are things like uh, resource acquisition, which we have with the gold coins. We also have uh, some uh, progress and some points uh, that a user can earn. Uh, it has resource collection, so you can collect cows in Farmville. It also has an avatar, which is the visual representation of the player in the game. Uh, think of uh, avatar as in a, on a website, like the farmer you see here, or like in Monopoly, it's the shoe or the car that you actually physically move around the board to represent you in that game. And this game also involves uh, levels and power-ups and also the player's social graph, so the, the friends or the competitors as part of the game. So next, let's look, let's look at a, a website that's not a game, and it's centered around something that is not a game, and that's, that's fitness. So this is photocracy. I don't know if many of you have seen this before. Uh, but it's a, a website dedicated to helping people uh, become more healthy and physically fit. And we can see that this site leverages a lot of, of the gamification elements that we saw in the Farmville example uh, just right here in this, screen, in this, in this uh, screenshot. So this includes things like quests and the, the avatar for the player, uh, points and progressions and badges, uh, which speak to the user's achievements. And we also have uh, the player's social graph, or their friends that are also a part of the site. Another site that we can look at uh, as an example uh, to show you some gamified uh, elements is Reality Drop. Uh, this is a relatively new site, and it comes from the Climate Reality Project. And this is Al Gore's foundation um, dedicated to uh, bringing awareness about climate change. And this site rewards users for uh, dropping facts uh, about climate change into different online forums, um, you know, comment fields in hot news articles or within online communities. And on here we see some of those same elements. We have a, a leaderboard here, and we have a, a ranking for the player along with their avatar. We have a, a point system. Uh, users can earn badges, and they also can take part in challenges. Uh, that uh, help drive engagement in this gamified system. So that's kind of some examples of gamification. Uh, one question that, that I get quite a bit is, why should I gamify my website? Uh, there are really a lot of reasons, but some of the most common are if you've identified that there's an engagement gap between 
uh, what your users are doing on your site and what you uh, want your users to do on your site, whether that's encouraging your users uh, to buy or reduce the amount of time it takes from their first visit to uh, making that decision to make a purchase, or if you're trying to build an online community, whether it's external to your organization or internal, uh, like an enterprise social network. Also, if your site is centered around a social cause, like the Reality Drop Project, uh, gamification can be very helpful in uh, doing crowdsourcing and bringing that online community together. And if your site is also dedicated to uh, bringing about behavior change on an individual basis, like photocracy, uh, working towards self-improvement, gamification can be a great uh, wedge to get in there and help drive uh, further engagement. And in the examples, we looked at some of the uh, components, uh, but I want to kind of dig a little deeper and, and kind of survey a little more about what goes into a, a gamified website. Uh, at the top level, there are the dynamics of the site. And this is the big picture of the site. These are the things that make the game coherent for your users and make it a good experience. This is kind of the structure of the game. So things like uh, the emotion you try to bring to your users. Do you want to bring them uh, in a feeling of empowerment, uh, like in the case of social change? Or do you want to bring them a, a sense of joy, so for like uh, reaching a milestone in fitness? Uh, and what is the dynamics also bring into, uh, into focus the answering the question, you know, what is the progression of the game? Is it uh, taking someone from a level of a beginner to um, more of a master, so from onboarding to mastery, or is it more of just a general education uh, component for the dynamic? Next are the mechanics of the game. And these are the things that drive the action of the game forward. So these are things like rewards and challenges. And uh, if, if it's a uh, user against user or a team against team uh, gamification system, it's the competition. Or kind of on the flip side, is it more of a collaboration among users? Uh, this is also where you give the users the feedback to encourage them to take motivation within the gamified system. And then finally come the components. These are kind of the nuts and bolts that actually make the game go. So these are things like avatars and badges and unlocking content and leveling up and the leaderboards and the quests and this, you know, leveraging the user's social graph and also the virtual goods uh, of the gamified system. A lot of times when people are putting together a gamified system, they tend to focus on the components first and they they get the idea that they want to have a gamified website or they want to put gamification into their website and they think, oh, we're going to have points and badges and a leaderboard and we're going to have different levels for users. And that's, that's great, but sometimes uh, it's more beneficial to, to start at the top, start, start at the dynamics and work your way down. And as you work out what the dynamics of your game are and you work out what the mechanics of the game are, the components really become self-evident. So you're not trying to shoehorn your components uh, into a site that maybe it, the, those components don't fit the narrative of your site. So I would encourage you to start again with the dynamics and then move to the mechanics and then finally to the components. And that really leads me into uh, the next part of uh, my, my talk today and that is uh, giving you the, a framework for creating your gamified system. And uh, just as a quick side note, uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll have a, a link to a page where you can uh, uh, find lots of resources related to gamif gamification, blogs, uh, other frameworks, and books. Uh, I'm picking out just one that I really like. So this isn't the only framework that you can use, but this is one that I think is really straightforward, and it really... Uh, puts things in a nice logical order for when you're developing a gamified system, whether it's for you, for your site, or maybe for uh, helping a client uh, put together a gamified system. So uh, the gamified system uh, process that I, I want to present to you today is a six-step process, and it was put together by Kevin Warbach and Dan Hunter. And Kevin Warbach uh, has written a book called For the Win. And it's a great read if you're really into gamification, so I would encourage you to check that out if you'd like to learn more uh, about this 
particular framework and gamification in general. Now, this six-step process very conveniently uh, has each step starting with the letter D, so they're really easy to remember. And I'm just going to run through these uh, fairly quickly so we can move on to the Drupal side uh, of things where I'm feeling a little more comfortable. Uh, so uh, the six Ds are first define the business objectives and then it's delineate the target behaviors. Third is to describe the players of the game. Fourth is to devise the activity loops. Uh, fifth is don't forget the fun for your users. And then finally, deploying the actual components of the game. So let's look at each one of those just a little more in depth. Defining the business objectives is really answering a few questions and trying to get as, as specific and as concrete about it as, as you can. So what, what is the gamification system for? Why, why are you gamifying your site? What are, what are the outcomes that you want to, to achieve as a, re, as a result of putting in place this gamified system? Uh, I think also answering the question, is this an internal uh, gamified system like for inside of my organization or is it external for my customers or for the community at large? Some examples uh, that, that uh, could be you know, thrown about for gamifying a, system, uh, a website would be uh, maybe to facilitate lead generation or uh, bring about user or customer education or to create a community of your users or your customers. And, uh, you know, on the, uh, kind of on the internal side of things, uh, you could look at, are you looking to enhance the productivity of the people inside of your organization or maybe the quality of work or maybe facilitate the transfer of knowledge from one department to another? So those are some of the objectives that, that you may come uh, to realize when you're looking at defining your business objectives for, for your gamified system. The next we have delineating the target behaviors or really defining the target behaviors. And this is where you can get really, really specific about what you want to do with your gamified system. So this would be things like, I want to increase the number of Facebook shares by 100% over what I've had last month. Or I want to reduce the amount of time it takes for, uh, for a user to make that decision to purchase by X percent. Or I want to just rise uh, increase the level of activity on my site. Maybe it's by user generated, generated content. Things like reviews or uh, questions and answers from one member of the community to another. And you can also uh, bring about questions like, I want to increase the amount of time that users spend on my site. So th these are very specific things that you uh, could uh, target for your gamified system. And I, I would say uh, you don't want to have 50 of these uh, when you are uh, writing out the target behaviors. I would say focus on one or two or three, but uh, once you get past five, then you might be muddying the waters a little bit about uh, identifying the motivations of your players for, for those things and actually the different components that could be used for, uh, for targeting each of those behaviors. So next is going through the process of describing your players, uh, the players of the game, your users or your customers. Uh, what, what do you know about them? Uh, do you know what age group they're typically within, what gender they are, uh, where they live, how much money they make? Uh, and answering the questions about, about what motivates them. Are, are your users typically more of uh, the achiever type or are they more of a, an explorer on your site? Do they want to kind of conquer things on your site or do they want to work with others uh, on your site? Uh, those are, are really some questions that get into the motivations of your users. And that is very, very important. I would say this is the most important step of the process uh, because as you're putting together a system, if you, if you put things in place that actually demotivates your users to take action, you could actually be causing more harm than good for the overall outcomes that you're hoping to achieve on your site. Next is devising the activity loop. So these are the things that you want uh, your users to do, uh, the motivations that you put in front of them and the, the actions you want for them to take. 
Uh, and this is uh, really in two different two different facets. One are, are the engagement loops. So this would be uh, leveraging those motivations of your players and saying, uh, for example, let's say you're putting in a reputation, you want to put in a reputation system, something like a stack exchange on your site, a user helping user sort of platform. Uh, so you need to dangle a carrot out there to get them to take action. So what is that motivation that you want to give them to take action? And then once they do take that action, what is the feedback that you give them that is going to further motivate them to take more action on your site and just kind of feed that cycle uh, of, of activity on your site? And then the next type of uh, loop that you should think about uh, is a progression loop. So how are you going to take a user who is brand new to your site, maybe doesn't know much about your organization, doesn't know about, uh, doesn't know much about what they can do on your site, how are you going to take them from the point that they really don't know what to do on your site and put in front of them things that challenges them, uh, that uh, encourages them to explore the site or to do things on your site uh, so that they can gain mastery about what you do or to learn more information about your products or services. And one question that you can ask uh, to help you identify the onboarding and the challenging and the uh, allowing users to become masters of your site is what, what do players already know? What do the people already know? Uh, maybe the ones that have been on your site for a year already. And then also what do the people know who are just brand new to my site? And as you are designing your game, it's really easy to get locked into uh, identifying the components and, and worrying about motivation. Uh, there really needs to be an element of fun in, in that game as well. So I would encourage you to take off your game designer hat for a few minutes and then put on the user hat. So put yourself in the shoes of your user and ask, is what I'm planning on putting together, is it, is it going to be fun? Is it going to be fulfilling? Are my users going to have a sense of accomplishment or a sense of joy uh, doing these things that I'm, I'm planning on putting together? Uh, and the key that I, I like to stress to my clients is your game is not your user's work. Um, if you are in the trenches and you want to uh, really put in place a very complex, a very elaborate gamified system, you might get caught up in the details and trying to make something that's too complex too quickly for your users. So it's always good to come back and, and really level set at what you're putting together shouldn't be work for your users. They should want to participate in your gamified system. And one thing you can do or two things you can do uh, to reach that is to make it game-like and to make it as enjoyable as possible for your users. So once you've gone through those five steps, uh, then it's actually the time to put in place those game elements, those components uh, into your site that you want to, uh, to build and actually build out that gamification system. And this is where you uh, put into place the game rules, uh, the narrative, the design, the aesthetic of, of the game. And uh, hopefully that is more than just points, badges, and a leaderboard. Um, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. And then after you've deployed the tools, I strongly encourage you to uh, analyze what's going on in the gamified system and, and measure the levels of activity and make any adjustments that are necessary and continue to do that. Uh, you know, it's very likely that at your first at bat, you're not going to hit a home run. Uh, maybe shoot for a single or a double and then adjust as time goes on. And when you're making those adjustments, uh, my only words of advice for you there are don't shift the game so much at any one time that you alienate your existing users. So it's really evolutionary as you're uh, building out and making a much more uh, rich game environment for your users. So that was a, a quick overview of the, of the framework of Kevin Warbeck and Dan Hunter, the six Ds uh, of building a gamified system. I have just a, a few more words of uh, encouragement for you here. Uh, the first is when you're putting in a gamified system, don't devalue your service. Um, and knowing your users, are that's very critical in, in doing that. 
So if your users are very well educated, uh, maybe uh, you have a, a brand that is uh, kind of uh, elite or distinct, you may not want to cheapen it by offering uh, the very simple badges or very kitschy badges to your users. So really know your, your, your users. And users are actually pretty smart and they know when they are being played. So if, if your gamification system is just a very thinly veiled marketing campaign to get them to, to buy more soda or to buy more music on your site, they're going to see through that, and that's actually going to turn more people off than would encourage people to participate in the gamified system. Uh, and then what you can do is, is really build a platform and not just a game. Uh, so maybe you need to bring in, uh, if you have a, a very knowledgeable user base, maybe instead of just points and a leaderboard, maybe you bring in a reputation system, uh, something along those lines. And you really want to put in place something that you can build on over time. And, and again, try not to uh, put everything throw and, and throw the kitchen sink at the user all at once. And a moment ago, I mentioned uh, points, badges, and leaderboards, uh, PBLs. Uh, these are seen pretty much everywhere. And uh, there seems to be a fundamental attraction to these. Uh, and I think it's, it's for a few reasons. One is they're really easy from a, a development standpoint, very easy to put into place. Uh, it, you know, as far as hours go, it really doesn't cost a lot to put together a point system and badges and a leaderboard. Uh, so there's, there's that aspect. And then when you're looking at points, uh, points are kind of a universal currency from one place to another. You know that if I get points, the things I get more points for are more important as far as the game goes rather than just the, the items where I get one point or two points. That thing that I get 20 points for is really important and if I want to be the achiever in that game, I go for those items. Uh, so I would say if you only offer points, badges, and a leaderboard, uh, those are, are really, uh, again, very common. And if, if your gamified system starts and ends with just points, badges, and leaderboards, I would, I would say that your, your system would probably be boring at, at some point. Um, you might get some great activity to start with, but then you would have a quick drop off in the activity on your site. So what you can do is, if you do have those competitors on your site, those achievers uh, as part of your user base, do go ahead and do that, that PBL, but also put other engaging activities in the site like challenges and unlocking content and leveling up in the reputation system. Those sorts of things uh, really bring a richness to a gamified system. And uh, while I'm also talking about PBLs, the L of that, the leaderboards, can be very demotivating. So if, if let's say you have um, 250,000 points on the, on, the, on the leaderboard in your first place, and, I am, and you've been on the site for three years, and I'm brand new to the site, and I just get in and I uh, go through the, the site tour and I have my 25 points, and then I click on the leaderboard to see where I'm at, and I see a little widget that says I have 25 points, and number one on the board has 250,000 points. For me personally, that would really turn me off to want to be engaged in that community. So there are some things that you can do. Uh, one would be to have a personalized leaderboard. Uh, so that could be uh, show me where I rank among my friends from Facebook that are also a member of your site. Uh, or you could just show me, maybe not with a ranking number, but show me where I am kind of in the middle of the pack. And if I have 25 points, maybe I just need five more points to move above the person in front of me on that leaderboard, that might be just enough of a carrot to get me to take action on that site. So uh, that covers kind of the, the theory uh, of uh, putting together a, a gamified system. And now what I want to do is, is kind of move into the Drupal side of things since we're at a Drupal conference uh, and, and that's what I like to do. So what I've done for you here is uh, I've put together a list of a number of modules that can help put into place 
uh, those components of a gamified system that we were uh, looking at earlier. Uh, so first for the kind of the overarching uh, kind of frameworks for putting in place a gamified system, uh, there are really two lead contenders out there, I'd like to think. One is the achievements module, and the second is the goals module, which again, um, caveat is I helped put that together. Uh, the achievements module is really code-based. So if you want to dive in um, and leverage the achievements API, and build your gamified system on top of that with a lot of custom code, that is a, a great way to go. And uh, it, it's a great module, it has great features to it. Um, so if you're more of a code-based person, uh, I would encourage you to go that route. And then, then on kind of the other end of the spectrum is the goals module. And this is more of a configuration-based uh, module. It leverages um, the, the rules module uh, and the thing and the actions and events that go into those into rules books uh, quite extensively. Uh, so those are kind of the to compare and contrast the two uh, kind of big modules that are out there. Uh, and, and as far as kind of helper modules go, we have uh, for points. There's obviously user points, which has a lot of add-on modules for it. Uh, badges. There's the user badges module, which is currently in in beta. And then we have, for leaderboards, you could do uh, views, tying into user points, maybe doing using radioactivity uh, for uh, putting together maybe something that's trending. Uh, as far as avatars go, there's uh, actually an avatar selection module where you can predefine a set of photos or pictures that you want users to associate to their user account. So maybe you don't want users to upload photos of themselves. You want to give them kind of a, a character or uh, an illustration uh, to use for them. If you do want pictures, obviously you can drop an image field on the user record. Uh, if you want more of a kind of a reputation-based system, you can uh, uh, add a real name onto that so that when a user's image shows, it also has their name next to it. For more of the collaboration uh, pieces of a gamified system, there's the forum uh, module that comes with core, uh, organic groups, user relationships. Uh, there's a lot of voting uh, modules, vote API, voting API, and the vote up down module, and others. Uh, and then also there's wiki tools, uh, and Drupal Commons has a, a really good wiki module as well. Uh, for unlocking uh, or leveling up, unlocking content, uh, two modules I like to use uh, node view permissions, which I'll show you in my demonstration in just a minute. Uh, and there's also hidden nodes, which is uh, another module that has a nice uh, interface to it. Uh, to leverage the social graph, uh, friends that you have on the site, there are uh, many, many, many modules. Uh, there's share this uh, to kind of get that overall uh, list of social platforms together. And then there are the specific modules, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and that list just goes on and on. Uh, to do collections like resource collection or collecting uh, things from the site, you could use entity references on the user record or uh, you know, maybe a content profile kind of thing with a, with a node reference on it. Uh, and then for giving users feedback, also you know, providing feedback to other users and also receiving feedback from other users, uh, there's the flag module, private messaging, the messaging module, and again, radioactivity can give some feedback as far as popularity or um, trending items on, on, your, uh, on your site. So, uh, we're about to get into the demonstration on, on the goals module, and I want to kind of give you a, a quick little uh, primer on it so that as I'm going through uh, the demonstration, uh, you have a good, good background of, of what's going on. Uh, so the, the goals module puts in place task-based goals or task-based achievements. So uh, I, think, I, I think a good way of describing it is to actually con to contrast it against what it's not. Uh, a very simple gamified system would be uh, leveraging points and badges. So if you have 20 points, you get the starter badge. And if you have 50 points, you get the intermediate badge. And if you have 100 points, you get the expert badge. So the, the badges are tied specifically to attain, uh, attaining a point level. Uh, and in the goals module, you can make it task-based. So you can say, all right, user, you need to do A, like look at the welcome message, and B, complete your user profile, and once you've done those two things, then you get 
the beginner badge. And then once you have contributed content to the site and something you've contributed gets 10 likes, then you get the contributor badge. And then once your comments uh, have 100 likes over the entire site, then you get the uh, chatty Kathy badge or something like that. So you can, you can tie badges or achievements to very specific things. And so in the example of like, uh, if I have, again, two tasks associated with a goal, once those two tasks are complete, then that goal is determined to be complete. And uh, goals and tasks within the goals module are both fieldable entities, so you can drop additional fields on each of those entities. So if you wanted to uh, put some customization into those, you are certainly welcome to do that. Uh, and goals also ships with the goals extras module, which I will be actually showing you today. And this uh, gives a, it's a really simple implementation where you can upload an image with a goal. And once that goal is complete, the user is awarded that as a badge for completing that goal. And it also has a user points uh, field, so you can actually award a, a specific number of points uh, for completing a goal. And then there's also a, a block that you can drop into any page on the site to show the user the badges that they have completed. All right, so now we're going to dive into the demonstration. And I do need to preface this with, I am not a brave man. I do not want to do a live demo for you because I have the Murphy's Law luck of doing live demonstrations. So I'm going to give you lots of screenshots and uh, a screencast of, of this and um, really give you a nice experience for a demonstration so you're not sitting there feeling uncomfortable for me as, as things crash around. So uh, this demonstration is going to be a really simple example. And at the top of the talk, I talked that I love bowling, so 10-pin bowling. Uh, so in my simple example, I am going to put together a social forum for 10-pin bowlers. Uh, there's going to be forum topics, and people can make posts in that and, and uh, apply comments. And those posts and comments can be liked. Uh, and once you reach a certain level, you get a, you kind of level up, and you can un unlock additional content on the site. And I'm also dropping in a leaderboard uh, to demonstrate the, the, the points side of the Goals Extra module. So for that leaderboard, it is going to be point-based. Uh, if if someone likes my forum topic that I posted, I get two points for each person that likes my topic. And if I comment on something else and it gets a like, then I get one point for that. And then if I complete the onboarding process, I get an incredible 25 points. So that's, that's kind, of the, kind of the structure of this game uh, for the leaderboard. And then for the badges, uh, if I complete the onboarding process, if I, if I view the welcome message, um, I get the bumper bowler badge uh, for, for getting started on the site. And then if I log in uh, once per day for three days in a row, uh, then I get the turkey. So in bowling, turkey is three strikes in a row, so I'll get the turkey badge for logging in three days in a row. And then finally, if um, my content and my comments get uh, a certain number of likes each, then I will unlock the team captain's badge. Now, before I actually get started, I'm going to fast forward into the future a little bit uh, to really illustrate the, the task-based goals that come with the goals module. So here we have uh, the goals and task configuration uh, kind of landing page. Uh, once those three badges and goals have been established, so we have that bumper bowler goal, and it has one task in it, and that is to view the welcome page, view that welcome message. Then we have the second goal, which is the turkey goal, and it has one task associated with it as well, and that is to log in once per day for three days in a row. And then finally, we have that team captain goal, and it has uh, two tasks associated with it. First is receiving five content likes, and then the second task is 10 comment likes. So in my very elaborate demonstration I have for you today, uh, I have a base installation of Drupal Core 722, and here are the modules that kind of are, are in there as well. We have the forum module out of core, goals and goals extras, uh, C tools, um, another uh, with the user points, uh, views. We also have node view permissions. I generated some dummy content using Devel, 
and then we have the rules token and entity. So first thing I did was after I installed the site, I created the welcome message. So I just created a basic page node that said uh, the title of welcome page. And then I created a block, uh, put it in the first sidebar and just linked to that node. And that node is uh, node ID 251 and that's gonna come into play in just a minute. Uh, next, I created a premium content type. So this is for the content unlocking piece uh, that I'm going to demonstrate for you. So I created a premium content type cleverly named premium content. And then I uh, enabled the premium content uh, view permission with the node views, uh, node view permissions module. So what this does is this creates a, a view own or view any content of a specific content type so you can really uh, lock out users, so to speak, if they're not, uh, if they don't have a, a particular permission or, uh, or a role that has that permission in it. And so then I created the premium member role using the, the, in the role section. And then I went to the permissions page and I enabled that, that new role, that premium member role with the uh, node view permissions view any content of that, of that premium content type. So then next I uh, created some flags. Uh, I created uh, flags for both comments and content. And then I went over to the user points configuration and the user points flag module dropped a new section on there for me uh, to award points based on flags uh, related to content and comments. And so here is where I award the content author two points for content that is liked and I award comments, uh, I award one point to the comment author for a comment like. And then I took that, uh, that badges earned block that's generated by the goals extras module and I dropped it in the right, uh, the first sidebar, the left sidebar and I put it at the top. So now we get into the action of my demo. All right, so here I am on my Bolarama site, and I am uh, going to. I'm going to look this. I'm going to look this way to narrate for you. I'm going to the goals and tasks section, and I'm adding that first task for uh, creating the bumper bowler goal, and this has uh, 25 points associated with it. So when that goal is complete, the user gets 25 points. I'm dropping a, a badge uh, for the image on here. And then uh, once that's done, I'm going to hit save. And then next, I'm going to add a task to that goal. And the task that I'm going to add is uh, to view that welcome page. So here I'm giving the task a title uh, in the uh, task type, which we'll talk about in a minute, is the view welcome page. Um, and then uh, here, I'm gonna stop this really quick. At the top of the screen there, you see a task count. So this is saying for this task to be complete, the user only has to view that welcome message one time. And then these next two sections, the uh, within tells me uh, if, if you have more than one uh, instance of that task that has to be complete, like the logging in once per day for three days in a row, this is where you tell it that that task needs to be completed within three days. And then the limit is where you tell uh, the task or the goals module uh, that you can only count one login per day, for example, uh, towards completing that task. So I saved this task, and if we actually jump back over to the goals and task page, we can see that first task, uh, the first goal and the first task have been put together. So we have the bumper bowler goal, and then we have the, the view welcome message task right there. So next, now that we have this goal and task put together, we're gonna head over to the rules uh, page, uh, configuration page, and we're gonna set up rules to be triggered when someone views that welcome message. So I'm uh, giving this a name of uh, view welcome message, and on the react on event, I'm going to say content is viewed. And then on the next page, <clears throat> we have the, the rule started, and in the conditions, I'm going to specify that when node 251 is viewed, uh, that's what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna do a simple data comparison and select the node being viewed and the node ID being viewed. 
So I, uh, that's kind of the, the left half of my equation. So when, when the node being viewed is 251, uh, then to trigger the actions to take. And the action I'm going to take is to record that viewing by that user towards completion of goals. So I pick the uh, record task activity uh, in the value to, of what to record. I'm going to pick the view welcome message and I'm going to use tokens and grab uh, the current user uh, to grab, uh, to know what user it is that's viewing uh, that task and I'm going to hit save. So this uh, first rule to record that task activity is now complete. So we have viewing the content, uh, making sure it's node 251, and then recording that viewing uh, towards the completion of the task. So then next I'm going to, uh, when, when someone views that page, uh, that goal is going to now be complete. But I'm going to add a little bit to that. And here I am going to uh, also display a message on the page so that user knows that they've completed that task. So um, I'm creating a new rule and it's going to be uh, the react on event is a goal is completed by a user and I'm going to tell it that it's the uh, goal that's completed is the, the bumper bowler goal. And I'm just going to pick the action of display a message on the page. It's gonna be something really fun. It's gonna be, hey, you've completed the bumper bowler goal. Here's a badge and 25 points. So now that we've done that, we have completing the goal and also uh, triggering a reaction uh, to give the user a message that they've completed that goal. So I'm going to kind of quickly go through that second, um, the second goal of uh, logging in once per day for three days. So we're adding in the new goal here, the, the turkey goal. User's not gonna get points for that, uh, but they are gonna get this uh, lovely badge and we will uh, save that. So now we're going to add that one task to this goal. And so we have uh, the task name is login three times uh, in three days. And I'm gonna associate it to the turkey goal. Uh, the task type is login. And I'm gonna say that the user needs to log in three times and within three days and with a limit of one count per day. So someone can't just log out, log in, log out, log in, log out, log in, and get that done. They actually have to come back three days in a row. So now once that is uh, saved, then I'm going to head over to the rules section and configure the uh, reaction to, to uh, record when someone logs in towards their completion of, the, of this goal. So here that is, uh, we have uh, the goals completed by the user and uh, uh, so I did the task, which I'm not showing you here, but then we have the goal. So the goal is completed by the user uh, and specifying that it's the turkey goal. And then uh, I'm gonna show a message on the site and it's something really clever like, hey, you've logged in three days in a row, congratulations, have a badge. Uh, so then next, I'm going to uh, show you uh, that goal that has two tasks associated to it. And this is the, uh, the team captain goal. So we have the team captain goal, uh, another fantastic badge. Uh, and then we're going to add the two tasks. The first one is the content likes, so we're naming the task five content likes, associating it to the team captain goal and giving it a machine name of uh, content liked and just say that that needs to be done five times so any user can like any other user's thing, someone's uh, content five times and that's complete. And now we're do the comment likes. So we have uh, 10 comment likes, again, associating it to the team captain goal uh, giving this a machine name of uh, comment liked and say that that needs to be completed 10 times. And so next I'm going to head over again to the rules configuration area and set up the recording of those, uh, that task activity towards the completion of, of goals for the user. So here we are with the first rule and this is the uh, comment likes uh, and then the uh, react on event is uh, 
content has been liked, has been flagged as liked. And then the action I will be adding is uh, record uh, task activity for goals. And I'll give it the uh, comment likes. And for the, uh, the ID of the user to record this for, we'll do the comment author. So I'm just going to copy paste that in here. Um, and a, another feature of the goals module is you can actually take away goals and task activity from a user. So let's say that, that you like my comment, but then you're like, oh, I didn't mean to click on that, so I'm going to unlike it. So then it could take it away. So I'm going to record the, the comment ID here so that uh, if I did want to get fancy and build that out, I could uh, back out uh, unlikes to my, to my comments. So now we're doing the same thing for the content likes. Uh, we have uh, recording that a node has been flagged under like content. Uh, and again, we're going to add the node ID, uh, uh, excuse me, the, the node author for uh, the uh, record for user. If I can find it here. And then for uh, the ID related, I just dropped in the uh, node ID. So that is complete. So then now we are going to uh, unlock that content for a user that completes this goal. So here we are. Uh, we're going to record the rule for uh, team captain goal complete. And this is the react on event is a goal is completed by a user. And the condition will be the team captain goal. If I uh, realize I'm about to click on the wrong thing. There we go. So goal is completed by the user and we say it's the team captain goal. And I hit save. And then the, in the actions, I, I actually first put in a message uh, to, the, to the user that they've unlocked that goal, uh, which you see here. And then finally, I'm adding another action to take, and that is to grant the, the, uh, the person who earned that goal or completed that goal uh, to grant them the premium member role so that they can see uh, that, that activity or to see that extra content. So now that I've done that, again, I'm going to apply the premium member role and then save that out. So now we have that, uh, that is complete. So now I'm going to actually show this in action. So um, here I am logged in as just me uh, on my site. Uh, logged in, you can see I don't have any badges in the first sidebar. Here's a, a simple leaderboard I put together with views. Shows I have zero points uh, and also note that admin is a little bit above me with three points. Uh, here's that block I dropped in the first sidebar. When I click on that content, uh, the page loads shows that special content, and then it also immediately gives me that badge, and I have that friendly message that I have completed that goal. And then when I head over to the leaderboard, you can see that I have actually surged into the lead uh, above the site admin. So I have 25 points now, and the admin just has three. So next, I, I want to show you the unlocking special content. So I'm, uh, here I'm adding a very cleverly named uh, forum topic called Scott's Interesting Topic to uh, the forum. And then I'm going to uh, actually log in as the admin here. And uh, I am going to be the, uh, the fifth person to like this post. So now that I've liked it, I'm going to switch back over to me. You can see I'm uh, currently, uh, I was on the page for special content where I wasn't able to see it. I, I can put a special, I could uh, configure a special message to show on that page that you need to unlock uh, to view that content. And then I, when I reloaded the page, I was given uh, granted access to that special piece of content. And uh, then I was also given the badge. So uh, that actually wraps up my, my demonstration for uh, this afternoon. Um, again, uh, I do have a lot of resources, uh, links to blogs and books and, and uh, other presentations I really like about gamification. Uh, we can find those on the Duo Consulting blog. Uh, 
which if you uh, download these slides, you can get a link to, or here is the uh, a bit.ly URL for uh, that post. Um, so that really wraps it up. Um, do we have any questions? If you have any questions, there is a, a microphone uh, kind of in the middle of the room. All right, we have one coming. Not, not in a, a customer interaction, kind of like physically going to the yeah. gym sort of thing. Uh, but we have used this to, to build out some gamification for online education communities. Uh, I don't have any specific examples with building out kind of that physical customer interaction at a, at a retail establishment, no. But it could very easily be done. Uh, scan your, your gym tag, populates the form that you've logged in, and then you know someone can come in later, log into their to their fitness portal and see all the badges that they've they've completed for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alright, thank you for the presentation and the questions. So um, we have another question about the likes of the Q7. Do we need to see any flags? Because I feel that it's very important for other users to and for the user himself to be able to see Yeah, definitely. Um, again, the, the, the modules I use are not a comprehensive list. Uh, the like module would probably be very good to be able to give visibility into who else likes content, for sure. Thank you for, for mentioning that. That was a great talk as well. I learned a lot. Thank you. Um, how do you deploy a gamification system? So um, is it okay to first, for example, release likes and ratings and then add user points to them, or do you, is it better to deploy the whole thing all at once? There, there is a, a critical mass of things that you uh, should put together kind of in, the, in that first release. Um, but having said that, there, there's nothing wrong with just having a base number of likes for content and then use that as kind of the seed for a point system so that maybe, you know, next Monday when everyone logs in, Everyone's not starting at zero. You have the likes uh, of content from the last, you know, three months or whatever uh, to use as that seed for uh, your point system. You can definitely do that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All right, great module. Um, Thank you. I do have a, que a couple questions about the module that you sent me that gave me the link to the question. Okay. Um, for your module, um, uh, I'm wondering about two Okay, let me take the, the first the first piece uh, first, which was, is there a way to only expose a certain number of goals to a user a, at a time? Uh, you can certainly do that maybe with a, if you want to give the users a list of, uh, of goals that you have in front of them and maybe hide the others using some sort of node access uh, ability. And then when you're uh, trying to record task activity towards a specific goal, uh, you could check to see if they have a specific role or they have access to uh, one of the, a specific node uh, to be able to delineate if the user should actually be, you know, the action that they took, was it intentional for completing that goal or was it just kind of accidental and you don't want to record that? Uh, to the, to the uh, second part of the question, um, can you 
uh, just refresh me again on that. I, I totally blanked. For creating your goal or task, mm -hmm. the, the objectives, can one of those objectives be hidden in the goal? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, yes, it can. Uh, so in the conditions that uh, you put into that rule for recording a task activity or a uh, user has completed a goal, uh, you can say, has uh, you know awarded user uh, been completed? I, th I think that's in there just from the inherent properties of the rules module. Uh, but if not, that's definitely a, a great suggestion uh, to be able to put that in place. Uh, I was just curious if you have tried uh, basically integrating the goals with like Facebook likes. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I, I have not, uh, but I don't know uh, why you couldn't just uh, kind of hook into that, maybe a JavaScript, when they click on it, just trigger another action that says, okay, also record this for goals and task activity. You can definitely do that. Thanks. All right. All right, so we are out of time. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time and attention today. Hope you uh, enjoyed the presentation.